Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. We got some great news on the Nintendo Switch such as a new emulator has popped up, ways not to get banned on it, and a way to run backup games. We also have some great news for the PS Vita such as an exploit getting released earlier than expected. With that, let's go ahead and jump right in because we have a lot to talk about. As always, let's go ahead and start with the Nintendo Switch. The very first thing I want to talk about is the fact that you can run backups on the Switch now with two different things. Uh, you have the Layered FS as well as the Hikate mod. It's a kind of branch off of the actual Hikate mod, which is kind of cool, but also now the original Hikate mod has been taken down from GitHub because the creator of it did not want people using it for piracy, so we just decided, you know what, I'm going to make it all closed source. With that being said, yes, you can run backups on it, but also you need to be very wary if you do because Nintendo is able to spot you running that backup and you will get banned almost instantly. Let's also talk about that. So as far as piracy goes and all that, Nintendo has got it down. The whole thing is explained from the ReSwitch developer, Cyrus M. He has put a whole Reddit blog post thingy of how Nintendo is able to grab your data and how it is sent over to Nintendo and things like that. Essentially the console ID, the player ID, all the games and everything that you purchase and that you play, even if you don't own them get sent over to Nintendo and that is how they're able to track it and that is how they're able to even ban you because they will take the information from the games you already own versus the games you're playing that you don't actually own say cartridge or actual eShop based type of deal I guess and then they will go from there and if you don't actually own the games you will get banned either on your console or it will be an account ban. And of course, these bans are permanent. You will not be able to access the eShop or anything like that. The most you can do is actually update your retail cartridges games. So say for example, if you wanna play the whole piracy thing and run Layered FS and all that to play a backup game, well, essentially, you can't because Nintendo will say, oh, you don't actually own this game, you're banned. It's almost an instant ban. People have already been banned, as I said before. So guys, the best thing to do is one, just don't pirate games, and two, stay offline. We do not know what all information Nintendo actually gets as far as running homebrew and exports and things like that yet. So it's very, very possible to even get banned just by using the homebrew launcher and things like that from what I know. So yeah, guys, just be careful. So some of you have, may have already gotten hands-on with the Team Executor's custom firmware SX. This custom firmware is handy, obviously it does also let you play ROMs and things like that if you want to be a pirate, but do you know people are already trying to reverse engineer it? Yes, the reason why people are trying to reverse engineer this device is because some people believe that Team Executor should not make a profit off of a exploit that will be free here in the next coming months, and I completely agree with them. Other people think that, oh hey, we could decrypt the actual custom firmware so that way we are able to run our own backups and figure out how they did it. So there are different teams that are trying to decrypt it and some of them even released some tools to help decrypt it. So guys, if you're one of these people who like to figure out the ins and downs of things and that have been encrypted and things like that, this is definitely something that you should look into. Sticking on the Team Executor topic, they have also released version 1.1 of their custom firmware because people were already having problems with it. So, first things first, you are able to actually upgrade your Switch without burning any of the e-fuses, but you might be asking now, what are e-fuses? Nintendo created these little things that are called electronic fuses, and whenever you upgrade your system, say from 1.0 to 5.1, it actually burns certain fuses so that way you cannot downgrade. And this actually works very, very well. You are unable to downgrade it at any point if you upgrade to the newest firmware. People have found out that you are able to actually circumvent these e-fuses and not get them burnt. And people have found a way to actually update your system, say, from 1.0.0 to 5.1.0. So that way you don't burn any e-fuses and you can be on the newest firmware. Since you don't burn any e-fuses, you are also able to downgrade back to whatever firmware you want, which is really, really cool. But some unlucky users have already found out that if you upgrade from 1.0.0 to 
2.0, for example, and then use the Team Executor's custom firmware, it goes ahead and burns those e-fuses and then you are stuck on that newest firmware. Again, that is only if you are on the very first version of the custom firmware. The custom firmware version 1.1 actually circumvents this and fixes this problem, but the fact that they already had a huge, huge problem like this that they totally just overlooked tells me there's going to be more problems in the future and it's something I still don't recommend using and just wait until the atmosphere exploit comes out because it's going to be a free exploit and you don't have to pay anything. Next up on the Nintendo Switch, we are going to be talking about the homebrew application side of things, such as a new application by Joel16. It is called NX Shell and is currently in the beta revisions of Beta 3. Now, this program is essentially an all in one homebrew application thing where you could do a file browser, a music player, you can create and modify files as well as create and modify folders. This homebrew I have a feeling is going to be used a lot in the future and I'm sure eventually it's probably going to be getting backup installer support. So it's essentially like the FBI for the 3DS essentially. Just think of it that way and I have a feeling that's what's going to be in the future. And for those people who really love to play their old school games, we have another emulator added onto the list of emulators for the Nintendo Switch. This emulator is the PSNES. It is essentially a port of the ZSNES, but on the Switch. Now, this emulator does work well, and you can even play whatever games you want from what I know, as long as you know where to get them. And it's just a, it's a fun time. I really enjoy playing other emulators on other consoles, which is just really cool to me because it's literally a handheld console at that point and it's making the Switch even more thought after because you're able to play all these emulators. And that's it for the Nintendo Switch. Let's jump over to the Nintendo 3DS because we're still not done with the Nintendo yet. So with the 3DS, we have got a stability update, which is really not really helpful. It's 11.7.0-40. And this update, like I said, it's just a stability update, but it does not hurt any of the homebrew scene at all. You're able to still do everything that you want to do. I have a feeling at this point, Nintendo just doesn't really care too much about blocking exploits. One, because it switches out. Two, because you already have ARM9 loader hacks, which you literally, you can't circumvent that. That's a hardware thing. Just like how the Nintendo Switch's thing is a hardware thing. But I'm sure eventually they're going to be coming with another revision on the Nintendo Switch. So, Smealing was the one who said that all the homebrew stuff works on the newest 3DS updates, such as Ninja Hacks. So, guys, if you still use Ninja Hacks, then, uh... Good on you, but it still works. Also, Ninja Hacks has posted a tweet saying that he will be at DEF CON talking about 3DS exploitation, and he even has a new 3DS exploit that will be able to be a free primary exploit and also run ARM9 execution, which is awesome because currently the newest firmware that there is, you have to use what they call seed hacks or something like that. Essentially, it's just a kind of a longer thing to get ARM9 loading, but with Smealium thing, it sounds like what you'll be able to do is just run the actual ARM9 exploit easily without any trouble and then have ARM9 loader hacks installed. And lastly, let's talk about the PlayStation Vita. Just recently, we actually got a tweet from the Flow himself, the one that's doing the new exploit, saying that it will be released a lot sooner than expected. Originally, he said it was going to be in the later versions of 2018, <laughs> later versions, and also then it got pushed over to the August of 2018, but now it is going to be July 1st. In his tweet, he has stated he will be able to release it in July 1st, and he is definitely making his promise on that one. It's only a few days away, and he has been updating a lot of his other applications, such as Vita Shell. Vita Shell right now is on version 1.94, and in the change logs, it even says it supports all the way up to version 3.68 firmware on the Vita. Now, with the new exploit, he is calling it the H Encore, which I'm assuming stands for Hinkaku Encore, which is I like that name, but with the exploits, you do want to keep a note that if you're on 3.65, you'll be able to use Enzo, which is the on-boot exploit, while if you're on version 3.67 or 3.68, you will have to always run the browser to get the exploit running if you turn off your PS Vita. It is not a on-boot exploit, so you won't be able to just turn on your Vita and be able to do things right away. 
And with that, that's all the homebrew related news I've got for you today. Now I know there is a lot of information in this video, so if you want to reread over anything, you can check all the links in the description below, as well as see all my social media accounts and my PayPal donation accounts. If you want to make any small donations to me, I'll be highly grateful. While you're down there, do tell me why you are excited for the PlayStation Vita newest exploit to come out, even at this re sooner release date. And if you don't have a PlayStation Vita, then I guess just tell me how awesome you are, because I know a lot of you viewers are very awesome. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit that like and subscribe button, as well as that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. And with that guys, I will see you all next video.